What's up, friends? What has 1,000 watts of power, costs about $650, and does this? Damn, son. Join me as we build the world's cheapest, fastest folding electric bike. So I wanted to do some kind of build video and decided to build the cheapest, fastest folding electric bike that the world has, has, has ever seen. It had to be something that you could build at home and something that has a decent amount of range as well. To be honest, I, I really just wanted to do something outrageous. So why would I do this? Why would I put a thousand watt hub motor in the front wheel of a crappy folding bike from China? For the same reason that someone would LS swap a Mazda Miata, except this isn't a Miata, this is more like a Yugo. I was told by several people, including a couple of bike shops, that this was not possible, that I couldn't build that motor into the wheel and some also had concerns for my safety which honestly all of that just made me want to do it even more that's when i realized how great of an idea this really was and i hope that this project this video inspires you the viewer to do what others tell you is not possible no matter how dumb of an idea it is you can probably do it all right skip lords if you don't want to hear the specs and info leading up to the build go ahead and hit those time links below also go ahead and follow me on instaham at tron underscore emoto where you can find behind the scenes pictures and video all right so there are several cheap folding e-bikes out there for less than $1,000, but they have nowhere close to 1,000 watts of power. Hence, we are building a much more powerful bike than any of the bikes in this category and for cheaper. Okay, so let's talk about the bike that we're gonna use for this build. So the bike I bought is called the My Dong LV Sachuxing. Yes, My Dong. And I've been letting people ride My Dong all over the place to stress test the chassis. The cheapest folding bike that you can get on Amazon at the time for $99. Now, this is no longer available, but you can find similar folding bikes all over Amazon. Now, fun fact, my dong apparently translates to Apophiogon japonicus, which is commonly referred to as dwarf lily turf, mondo grass, dragon's beard, which definitely sound like strains of weed. I think my dong was definitely smoking some good grass when they came up with some of the decals for this bike. Look at this decal. Super e-bike sport. There's nothing e about this bike. I mean, we're, we're definitely going to fulfill that. <laughs> Look at this one. New classic bike. Don't think, don't think too much about it. It's, it's an instant classic. And in case you were wondering, yes, this bike does ride about as terrible as you probably think it does. See this guy in the Amazon photo? Yeah, I wonder how much they had to pay him to smile while he's riding this bike. The V-brakes are absolute trash. Uh, the steering stem will never be as tight as you want it to be because the folding mechanism can never be as tight as you want it to be. So there's always play and slop in the system, which feels especially great when you're cruising up above 20 miles an hour. Nevertheless, this $99 bike is a great vessel for the electrons we're about to unleash and the tire rubber that we are about to burn. Here's a montage of me getting my hands all over my dong, which I am now dubbing the Shenzhen Scrambler. Wow, this box looks like it's been to hell and back. Look at this. See the actual poking out right there? It looks like a couple of drunk forklift drivers played warehouse hockey with this box, and no one won. So this bike came with an instruction manual, alright, 50 million pictures to help you put this together. Just follow the pictures, you'll be fine. So now that my dong was finished, it was time to stress test the bike and I picked a really big hill that I could get up over 20 miles an hour down. I 
survived that, so it must be good enough for a thousand watt motor, right? Now, I also ordered a thousand watt motor and controller kit from Amazon for $229. That puts our total now at $328 for the build. The problem is this hub motor is laced into a 26 inch wheel, which is too big for my dong. I actually could not find a 20 inch wheel with a thousand watt motor anywhere on Amazon, eBay, websites, it, they are not available. Now it is however possible to find 20 inch fat tire hub motors, but that's not gonna fit on my dong. So I bought this motor kit knowing that I was going to have to lace the hub motor into a 20 inch wheel. This is the major part of this build that the bike shops had a problem with. No one wanted to touch it for safety reasons. One guy said it's just not even possible, which I, you know, I knew it was possible somehow. I used this fancy spoke calculator to determine the length of custom spokes that I needed for this wheel. I then ordered 93 millimeter length spokes from this place and I just ended up lacing it in myself. Now I did take it to a bike shop and have it trued for $25 because I couldn't get a little last bit of the wobble out. Check out the motor buildup. All right, so moving on to the battery. I bought the cheapest 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery that you could find on Amazon at the time for $299. Now you can also find these batteries on eBay and probably other places as well. 13 series, seven parallel configuration. So it's 54.6 volts fully charged and puts out 30 amps, which should be good for 1400 watts of power. Now I was skeptical of this battery and I remain skeptical until I build a custom display that logs data for power and capacity, for, which will be in one of the next videos. But so far this battery's putting out some decent power. Before we get into the electrification of the bike, let's go ahead and talk about some specs. My dong has a healthy amount of power at 1000 watts and about 45 Newton meters of torque. 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery, estimated top speed of about 30 miles per hour. And in terms of range, it should get more than 20 miles of range if you use just the throttle, even more so if you're doing a combination of throttle and pedaling. Ah, and there is something else we need to talk about, torque arms. Due to the nature of hub motors, you will have a reaction torque on your axle that is the opposite of the torque that you're applying to the ground. And if you don't hold that axle captive, it will spin itself out inside of your dropouts and could cause your motor to completely fall off of your bike. Now you can use these generic torque arms for your bike and they'll probably work, but for our application, I really decided to over-engineer and overbuild uh, the torque arms to ensure success. As much as I like breaking things, I didn't want to fail on the first try. This part of the build, I did not do at home. I used the mill at work and machined out these crude aluminum parts and then coupled them with these plastic shock absorbers uh, to build the torque arms. And here we go. It's time to put the Shinjin scrambler together.
So our total cost, including the custom length bicycle spokes, ended up being around $650 which isn't bad for what it is. Thanks for sticking through this video with me, guys. If you like what you saw, go ahead and smash that like button. Go ahead and hit subscribe. I'm gonna try to do a crazy build once a month. And go ahead and follow me on Instagram as well, where I post behind the scenes stuff that you won't find here on the YouTube channel. And if you want, leave a comment, leave some feedback. Let me know what's on your mind. What do you think of this build? Gotta say, my favorite thing about the Shenzhen Scrambler is just spinning the tires and attempting to just burn out everywhere that I can. Here's a burnout montage. And <laughs> Last but not least, I leave you with some footage of me riding in Venice Beach today. Truly a happy ending for my dong. Thanks again, guys. Stay tuned and be safe out there. Yeah.